Now that we got both garboards on, the next planks that go on the boat are called the first broad strakes. And we've got a bunch of timber selected for those. So the mission today is to get those knocked down to size and scarfed together so that hopefully tomorrow we can work on cutting out and hanging the broad strakes. The mission today is to get a bunch of this lumber prepped for the first broad strakes. And the first broad strakes are the first plank above the garboard on the hull. And you can see here we got a couple fids of four, five, and six inches. And we can use those to put on the boat and determine how tall we want that plank to be um, and how much backing out we have to do. So for instance, if we were to do a four inch plank here, we would have about an eighth of backing out to do. And if you do a five inch plank, we've got about three sixteenths, so just a little bit more. And if we jump up to a six inch plank, we have a full quarter inch that we need to back out. So since the broad strakes for us are gonna go right through the tight turn of the bilge, we're gonna do narrower planks. So we're gonna put them on somewhere between four and five inches, and that way we don't have to do a ton of backing out here. And once we put on two of those, we'll be out of the turn of the bilge and we can start putting on some wider planks where we have these long flat runs. And we're also gonna start doing some spiling at that point as well. We're just gonna put on two straight planks for the first and second broad strake. And then between those and this batten above my head, we'll do some spiling and get those planks lined out and deal with the tapers so that from the batten north, everything will be nice and smooth and fair and we'll have really good looking top sides. So the mission today is just get all this lumber cut down, thicknessed, uh, and scarfed together. So let's uh, fire up some saws and fire up the planer and get these giant timbers down to the first broad streaks. Over these few days, we were glad to have the help of Kevin and Ashley, a father and son visiting from New Zealand. In addition to helping with the broad strakes, Ashley got on the joiner to make some more spiling battens to be used for the future planks. And Kevin drilled out the holes in the aluminum track for our modified skill saw that we'll check out later. After we roughed out the planks, we took them over to the bandsaw to get close to the right thickness. As soon as it comes out the saw, Alex and I will grab the next one, we'll bring it over, we'll mark it. So you have a minute to walk around, grab it, and put it on the saw horses. Just watch this wheel. Yep. If that thing catches you, you're going to know it. Once all the plank sections were through the bandsaw, we took them to the planer to get to the final thickness.
pardon my yelling at you, but the rain is really loud on the roof right now. Today's been pretty productive. We started with some huge, big slabs of oak, and now we have things that actually look like planks. So we got them knocked down to size with the thickness planer and the big bandsaw. And right now we're going through and getting all the scarfs cut so we can glue them up. The hope today is to get them scarfed and glued so that the glue can dry overnight. And it's about dinner time. It's been kind of a long day. So Alex is going to run into town and grab us some takeout while we finish cutting these scarfs. And uh, that way we can get them glued up, eat some grub, and call it a night because it has been a long, hot day. Today we say goodbye to Victoria's ballast keel. Uh, we weren't really sure what on earth we were going to do with this big old chunk of iron. And thankfully, a gentleman got a hold of us from down in Louisiana, and he was looking at building a 32-foot sailboat and wanted to know what we were doing with the keel from Victoria, which happened to be a 32-foot sailboat. Uh, so after talking with him a little bit and Pat Akin, who's the curator of the plans, we figured out that Victoria more than likely was an Akin Eric and that suited Jared just fine. Uh, so he is on his way. He should be here in a couple hours. And he's gonna scoop up Victoria's ballast keel, take it home, and build a brand new boat on top of it, which we are super psyched that that's the case. Basically, everything from Victoria is getting used either by us or somebody else. And that is the way we like to see it done. Waste not, want not. Uh, so today we jacked it up and we got the keel bolts out from underneath it. And now it's all ready for him to show up at the trailer and the last feat for us with Victoria will be getting the uh, ballast keel on the trailer. And then I'll fire up the tractor. <laughs> you want it? Yeah. So that was on the stem for the bobstay. You don't have to do that, man. Well, we're not going to use it. I know, I know. But we're still. Not, so, it was going to end up somewhere else in the scrap bin. With the help of the Kiwis, we got the broad strike material milled down and scarfed up the other day. So, big thanks to Ashley and his dad, Kevin, for coming and lending us a hand for a few days. So, the next step in that is to get these planks cut out and fit onto the hull. Now when we did the garboard here, cutting it out was in some ways easier because the garboard meets into the back rabbit at 90 degrees. So that was easy, we just set the scale saw to 90 and cut it around. And we also wanted the top edge to be 90 because when we do the planking, we only want to have one funky bevel. So you'll have one 90 degree face and you're just going to match the bevel on your other plank to that. So for the garboard, we could just cut out both edges of it 90 degrees and be good to go. For the broad strakes and the remaining planks on the boat, one edge, its top edge, will get cut at 90, and its bottom edge is going to have to get cut at a compound changing bevel so that it matches the plank below it. And there's a few different ways to do that, and we elected to do it with a modified skill saw, which we'll show you in a second. But this is uh, just a chunk of pine, and we took it and marked out the bevels from the frames to the garboard where that meets, and wrote it onto the planks, and then used our modified skill saw and cut down that. And it was the first time using the saw and we wanted to do a test run before we committed to doing it in the oak. And the bevel came out really well, learned a little bit in the process. So now we can mark out and cut out this full length broad strake and we should be able to cut this bottom edge down it to pretty perfectly match the plank below it, which is the ideal. Uh, this pine board is a bit wide right now and it hasn't been backed out at all. Uh, so that it doesn't fit super tight. It was just more to see how the saw felt and how changing the bevel felt and whether or not that seemed like it was going to be smooth and fair when we put it up to the hull. And I think if this plank was a little narrower, which the broad strakes will be, and if it was backed out, those bevels look like they would match up really, really well. So I feel pretty confident going over to the oak and trying to cut it out. This is the tool that we built to use to cut the compound changing bevel on the bottom edge of all of the planks. And we can't lay claim to this invention. This was invented, we believe, by a guy named Lou Sazed, who uh, has a YouTube channel called Tips from a Shipwright. If you check that out, Lou's been working on boats longer than Alex and I have been alive. And he's seen and done a lot of really interesting things over the years. And one of those was turning a skill saw into a tool that could cut a compound changing bevel. So our setup's a little bit different than Lou's, but the principle is exactly the same. So we have a track here, in our case, a thin strip of aluminum that we're going to 
tack down to the plank that's an offset from the blade so that we can not worry about trying to follow a line as we cut the plank and all we need to do is keep it tight to the fence. Uh, with the help of Joe, who's the machinist who's been helping us out, and the bridge port, uh, we milled down some aluminum stock and built a wider sled for the saw. For us to be able to cut the bevels, the saw has to basically be overhanging the board. Uh, so if we didn't have this wide base, it would be really, really tippy. And we also put on a counterweight. Without the counterweight, the saw would also be really tippy. Now the really big feature is the dial on the front, which uh, with Joe's help we made out of a clamp. And it attaches to the saw, and what happens is there's a gauge here, and I can turn the dial, and as you see, you turn the dial, and the saw starts to tilt. So we can mark where every frame on the plank is, and we can mark the bevel at every frame, and we can just walk down the track and slowly turn this dial and read the gauge. And as we do that, it'll just slowly tilt the blade up, slowly tilt the blade down, and we should be able to almost perfectly match the bevel of the plank below it. Uh, which if we can get that to work, and it works like the way it does for Lou, because <laughs> he makes it look real easy, uh, we'll be in great shape. Other ways to do this are by hand, uh, which is a lot of on and off the boat uh, to get that to fit right. And definitely, the more you do it, the better you get. And you talk to an old pro who's hung a lot of planks in their lives, they're really good at it. But for us, it's going to be a pretty big learning curve. Another thing is you can set up a bandsaw um, so that the table ends up tilting and you have another person tilting the table. But since we're scarfing up the planks, that's a 40 foot plank to run through the bandsaw. So in this instance, it's a lot easier to bring the tool to the wood than the wood to the tool. Um, so yeah, that's the gist and uh, we'll get this set up and see if we can get this first plank cut out and see how well this contraption works. So we cut the stern end of the plank and then proceeded to dimension the plank using the same process as with the garbards, marking the location of each frame before recording all the other measurements. <laughs> I don't think it's breaking. I think the glue lines are okay. Then we marked the lines so we could tack the track for the modified skill saw. pretty easy. Like I feel like I'm walking through the degrees very quite smoothly and I'm having an easy time reading them. Nice.
yesterday we got the bevels cut on the first broad strake on the starboard side and we got it fit onto the boat so that we could pull measurements for backing out. This morning we pulled those measurements real quick and ran the power planer down it and did a rough backing out. And then we nipped off the end of the nib on the plank. So if we look over here on the um, garboard that we put on, the very end of it kind of runs out to a bit of a feather edge and those can be a bit weak. So we didn't really catch it when we put the garboards on, but it's not that big of a deal. So for the rest of the planks, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a nib end. So we nipped off the very end of the plank here, and we're gonna save the nib. And when we do the next plank, this nib will basically get added to the next plank. We won't act physically use this nib, but we'll use it as the pattern. So we'll pop that down, and the next plank will have kind of this hook on the end that'll nestle over the end here and we can cock that seam. And that way we don't end up with a whole bunch of these little feather edges that over the years of being cocked and worked on and sanded and whatever have a tendency to split out or peel away. Uh, and these nib ends will be a lot stronger and hopefully a lot longer lived. Now that we've got this plank roughly backed out and the nib cut off, we can throw it back on the boat, pull some more measurements, take it off, do a little more detailed backing out. And we'll do that a few times until we get it exactly how we want it. Uh, once we have that, really well fit. We can oil it and we can paint it and hopefully hang it tomorrow. So the goal today is to get this one wrapped up. We're really close to it and then jump onto its mate on the other side, get that one cut out, backed out, and hopefully we'll get both of them ready to be hung tonight and uh, tomorrow we can come out and hang the two planks. It took us a little while yesterday with the saw and the jigs. It was our first time using it and it's all homemade so it was you know a little bugs to work out and stuff. Um, but everything went really well with it. I feel a lot more confident with it now after doing this one plank and seeing how that went. So I think the other one is gonna go even that much faster. Um, you know, goes quicker the second time you do it. So with that, let's get to work. We did not get quite as far yesterday as we hoped we would. <laughs> uh, so we had cut out the um, starboard side broad strike here. And when we did the backing out and went to fit it, what we realized is we were off just a little bit on the bevels. So the rail and the saw that we made worked really well, but somewhere between picking up the bevels off of the boat, transferring them to the plank and then changing that dial as I ran down it with the saw. We ended up being a little bit off uh, and that led to a decent amount of hand planing so it took us a little while longer than we thought to get it fit. But we did get that one fit yesterday so today we're going to hang it and tomorrow we're going to take all the new information that we learned and jump onto the broad strake on the other side and hopefully the bevels will come out a little bit better. Um, so we'll show you here what we think kind of went wrong and how we hope to fix it on the next one. As previously mentioned, when we put on the garboard, the top edge of it is 90 degrees to the face of the plank, but that does not mean that it's 90 degrees to the frames after everything gets backed out and bent around it. So if we take a piece of wood here as a planking fit, and we put it against the frame, currently we're open in the back edge here and we're tight on the front. And that's the exact opposite of what we want for the planking. So when we put the planking on, we want it to be a little bit open in the front here so that we can put the cotton in and have it slammed shut in the back so that we don't just push the cotton all the way into the inside of the boat. And then when the boat swells, the outside edge should swell shut or close to it and seal that cotton in there and make a waterproof spline. So ideally, we have one third that sits really tight in the back and two thirds that's gently open so that we can put that cotton in there. And that's where picking up those bevels and cutting them with the saw is trying to do. So we're trying to get it so that all the way down the boat, the plank fits really tightly against the um, garboard, but also fits really tightly against the frame. And that angle is constantly changing. And what ended up happening with us is we were off in a few places just by a little bit. I mean, a couple degrees. And that made it so that we were tight on the outside and open on the inside. 
So to fix that and to put in the caulking bevel, we need to do a whole bunch of hand planing to be able to get that down and fit. Now the saw gave us a great guide, and like I said, it was only a couple degrees, so tweaking it was pretty easy, and it was actually a lot easier than if we did it all by hand. So it was still bonus for the saw. So what we're gonna try on the next one is to just add a couple degrees when we pick up the bevels, so that essentially we make it so that we purposefully open up on the outside a little bit, and then we'll touch on the inside. And that way when we do the backing out and we fit the plank, we can leave this edge kind of unmolested. It should fit tightly on the inside and all we'll have to do is run the hand plane down it, flatten out this back bevel a little bit so that we get our one third mating surface onto the keel, or I mean, sorry, onto the garboard. And that way it should be a lot less tweaking and tuning. Um, the bevels change quite a bit. And like I said, between picking them up and then transferring them and then turning the dial on the saw, I think with all of those, we were just off ever so slightly. And if we go off in a direction that's easier to correct, then it should make fitting that plank go a lot quicker. But we'll find out tomorrow. Ready? So, in the previous videos, folks thought that we were putting screws into the planks without lubricating them. Please let us reassure you that this is not the case and we would never skip such a step. Got the screws over here, the spot for the lube, and the copper hammer. We are going to get so much flack for doing this by hand. There's nothing better than a brace and that. I carry one in my boat bag. It's not what YouTube says. Yep. <laughs> It'd be so much faster if we used an impact gun. On a silicone bronze flathead? Yeah, if you want to buy about twice as many as you have, and you don't ever want to take them back out. And if you don't want to feel what you're doing. That's yeah. a nice little brace, too. That I've never seen one that small. I need to find one of those. Family heirloom. What are you doing with a caliper when you're measuring? What are you... So should be about an inch and a quarter from the edge. Oh, okay, you just got And then on the stem, we want to space them about three inches apart, give or take. And as we go aft, we space them out more. It was more important for the garboard. And then the frames, they get high enough, they just get two bolts through the frame. So that's oh, okay. easy, I don't need to worry about spacing them like that. Yesterday we got the first broad strake on the starboard side fastened off, so that one's all set. And today we're over here on the port side doing its mate. Uh, so we pulled all our measurements, we got everything marked, we tacked the track down, and now we're going to take the skill saw and cut that changing bevel down the plank. And this time we added three degrees to it so that we should end up tight on the inside and open a little bit on the outside. And then we can plane that inside edge a little bit so that it closes up. And hopefully that'll get us to be able to fit the plank with a few fewer tries than uh, we did on the starboard side. So let's uh, fire up the saw and see what happens. We left the broad strake on last night. We're having a little bit of a hard time getting it fit. Um, basically, we're starting with the hardest planks to put on. Um, the garboard and the broad strakes are gonna be the hardest to put on because the frames aren't very forgiving, so you're trying to fit something pretty closely to what you have. The more we go up, these guys will be able to move a little bit more and be a little bit more forgiving so we can have a little bit more wiggle room with things. 
Um, so today I'm going to be working with one of our volunteers, Will, who is kind of local and has built a couple little boats as well uh, to finish fitting this plank. Um, in the meantime, Steve is working with Kira out in the wood pile to choose the lumber for the next broad strake. Um, so let's get to doing that. Ready? Yep. So we had a good day yesterday despite the heat and the humidity. Uh, Will and I worked on fitting the broad strake and kind of finishing that out. And as you can see, we got it oiled and painted and ready to hung today. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do. Uh, and yesterday you guys worked on something completely different. Yeah, so Kira helped me. We dug through the gigantic oak <laughs> pile and we picked out timber for the next broad strakes and got those rough down to width. And then we also milled up some stock for one more pair of frames. So a bunch of you have noticed that there's a pretty big gap here in the framing. And the reason of that is that when we put the bolts through the forefoot, we wanted to spread them out since the forefoot's wide and it's a really kind of important critical attachment point on the boat. And that meant that those fasteners were relatively near the edge of the um, forefoot. So if we were to notch in like we did for the rest of the frames, we were gonna hit one of those bolts. So we decided just to leave that out for now, and then once we got the first couple planks on the boat, it would give us this fantastic pocket back here. And we can just cut the end of the frame to fit into that, steam each one, pop them down in there, and bend them into place. Uh, so that stock's milled up, and we're gonna make a small steam generator and do that in the next few days, but we'll get to that in another video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah. And I think it's cool for a little bit of her bronze and a little bit of her mahogany to go with her keel. Yeah. It's like she's gonna get rebuilt. So she's got her iron, she's got some of her it? timber, she got some of her bronze. That is the cash for that. I thought we said five thousand. You're gonna ask me that after I got the brass in my hand, uh, the bronze in my hand. So here's the last piece of the project. This is going back to you so you can finish the build. That's your first donation. That's the first donation to your project. It's all yours, take it. Take it. I'm not gonna take all of it back. No, I'll take, I it won't. Back. take it back. I won't take all of it back. Well, whatever you don't keep, take keep, is going keep, to somebody else. Keep a hundred bucks, at least. Keep a hundred bucks and yeah, go you eat You decide dinner. what you want. <laughs> <laughs> this is our plan for the get-go. Y'all yeah, look good totally people, but, <laughs> no, but, I, but what we agreed on was what we agreed on. Yeah, we know. But this is us Go treat back. yourself to beer. We will, thank you. Go build a boat on this thing. Oh, I damn sure will. We're happy enough That'll to see be, that she's going to get rebuilt. That's payment more than enough. This is sweet. This is sweet.